Hello guys, this is Indian Medico and in this video, we are going to see about benign AP bulbar ocular tumors. First, let us discuss about conjunctival nevus. It is the most common melanocytic conjunctival tumor. This picture shows conjunctival nevus. The risk of malignant transformation in conjunctival nevus is less than 1%. Now, let us discuss the histology of conjunctival nevus. It is similar to cutaneous nevus. However, there is no dermis in the conjunctiva. So, sub-epithelial and stromal replace dermal in nomenclature of conjunctival nevus. Now let us discuss the histology of compound nevus. In this case, there will be nevus at the epithelial subepithelial junction as you can see in this picture and the nevus cells are also present within the subepithelial stroma. There can be epithelial inclusions such as cysts and goblet cells in compound nevus. Another type of conjunctival nevus is subepithelial nevus. In this case, they remain localized. An uncommon type of conjunctive nevus is junctional nevus. In this case, there will be nest of nevus cells at epithelial subepithelial junction, as you can see in this picture. Now, let us discuss the symptoms of conjunctive nevus. They are usually first noticed in the first or second decade of life. The signs include solitary, slightly elevated, pigmented lesion of variable size. They are most frequently located in the juxtalimbal area. Over half of conjunctive nevus contain small cysts, as you can see in this picture. They are mobile over the underlying sclera. The pigmentation of conjunctival nevus is variable as you can see in this picture. Absence of pigmentation is also relatively common. Uncommon locations of conjunctival nevus include plica, fornix and caruncle. This picture shows conjunctival nevus in caruncle. Conjunctival nevus may become inflamed especially in case of children which can be mistaken for malignant change. Now let us discuss the signs of potential malignancy in case of conjunctival nevus. When the nevus is present in unusual site such as palpebral or fornicial conjunctiva, when there are prominent feeder vessels, when there is sudden growth or increase in pigmentation, and when there is development of nevus after second decade. In all these cases, you have to suspect malignancy. The treatment of conjunctival nevus is excision. Indications include cosmosis, irritation, or suspicion of malignancy. Now, let us discuss about conjunctival papilloma. It is associated with human papilloma virus infection types 6 and 11. Histopathology shows fibrovascular core covered by irregular proliferation of non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium, which contain goblet cells, as you can see in this picture. Now, let us discuss the clinical features of conjunctival papilloma. The lesions can be sessile, as you can see in this picture. They have a white base and flattish profile. This picture also shows a sessile conjunctival papilloma with feeder vessels. Some conjunctival papilloma can be pedunculated which resemble front. They are usually located in the juxtalimbal area, fornix or caruncle. They are usually solitary but may be multiple. Large conjunctival papilloma may cause irritation and they can interfere with lid closure or they can encroach onto the cornea. Now let us discuss the treatment of conjunctival papilloma. Small lesions resolve spontaneously whereas large lesions require excision in the form of cryotherapy to the base and surrounding area. Recurrence of conjunctival papilloma can be prevented by using subconjunctival interferon alpha, carbon dioxide laser vaporization, topical mitomycin C and oral cimeterine. Now let us discuss about limbal dermoid. A limbal dermoid is a choristoma meaning it is a mass of histologically normal tissue in an abnormal location. This picture shows a limbal dermoid. It consists of a mass of collagenous tissue containing dermal elements which is covered by stratified squamous epithelium as you can see in this picture. Now let us discuss the presentation of limbal dermoid. It usually presents in early childhood. It presents as smooth, yellowish, soft, subconjunctival mass as you can see in this picture. The most common location is inferotemporal limbus. It may contain protruding hair. It can be very large and encircled limbus in few cases as you can see in this picture. Now, let us discuss the treatment of limbal dermoid. The indications for treatment include cosmosis, chronic irritation, delen formation, and amblyopia from astigmatism or involvement of visual axis. For small dermoid, we can treat by simple excision, and for larger dermoids, we need to do lamellar keratosclerectomy. Now, let us discuss the systemic associations of limbal dermoid. The most common association is Golden Heart Syndrome. It is also called as Oclo auriculo vertebral spectrum. It is usually sporadic. The systemic features include hypoplasia of malar, maxillary and mandibular regions as you can see in this picture. 
there can also be macrostomia and microtia there can be preauricular and facial skin tags there can be cervical hemivertebrae mental handicap cardiac renal and cns anomalies ocular features include dermoid as you can see in this picture upper lid notching or coloboma microphthalmos and disc coloboma other systemic associations of limbal dermoid include treacher collins syndrome this picture shows a baby with treacher collins syndrome the features include limbal dermoid eyes with a downward slant small flattened cheekbones small steeply angled jaw small oddly shaped ears and cleft palate another systemic association of limbal dermoid is linear nevus sebaceous of jadafshan in this case there will be warty or scaly cutaneous lesions as you can see in this picture it is also associated with infantile spasms cns anomalies and developmental delay ocular features of linear nevus sebaceous of jadafshan include limbal dermoid ptosis cloudy cornea lit colobomas fundus colobomas and microphthalmos now let us discuss about dermolipoma it is similar in composition to solid dermoid but it also contains fatty tissue the presentation is usually in adult life it presents as soft yellowish subconjunctival mass near outer canthus as you can see in this picture the surface is keratinized and it may exhibit hairs the occasionally the lesion may extend into orbit or anteriorly towards limbus now let us discuss the treatment of dermolipoma treatment is usually avoided because of the complications of surgery like scarring ptosis dry eye and ocular motility problems in selected cases debulking anterior portion may improve cosmosis with lower risk now let us discuss the differential diagnosis of dermolipoma it can be confused with prominent lacrimal gland lobe it can be confused with orbital fat prolapse this picture shows orbital fat prolapse as you can see it closely resembles dermolipoma other differential diagnosis include lymphoma and myxoma this picture shows a myxoma appearing similar to a dermolipoma now let us discuss about pyogenic granuloma it is a fibrovascular proliferative response to conjunctival insult such as surgery or trauma it occurs in association with chelation or foreign body incarceration histologically there will be granulation tissue with both acute and chronic inflammatory cells there will also be proliferation of small blood vessels the term pyogenic granuloma is a misnomer because it is neither pyogenic nor granulomatous let us discuss the presentation of pyogenic granuloma it usually presents few weeks after surgery for chelation strabismus or enucleation it presents as rapidly growing dark pink fleshy conjunctival mass as you can see in this picture the treatment of pyogenic granuloma is with topical steroids and for resistant cases we can do excision now let us discuss the differential diagnosis of pyogenic granuloma it can be confused with suture granuloma the suture granuloma is large and it is usually mistaken for a malignant lesion this picture shows a suture granuloma other differential diagnosis of pyogenic granuloma include tenon capsule granuloma or tenon capsule cyst now let us discuss about some miscellaneous benign epibulbar tumors this picture shows epibulbar telangiectasia it is associated with sturge weber syndrome this picture shows reactive pseudo epitheliomatous hyperplasia it is a rapidly growing white juxta limbal hyperkeratotic nodule and it develops secondary to irritation this picture shows melanocytoma it is a rare congenital lesion it presents as slowly enlarging black lump that cannot be moved freely over the globe this picture shows epibulbar angioma it is a rare late consequence of radiation treatment now let us discuss about benign melanosis it is also known as benign conjunctival epithelial melanosis or conjunctival hypermelanosis it is a normal variant which is more common in dark skinned individuals it occurs due to the presence of excess melanin within basal layer conjunctival epithelial melanocytes the melanocyte numbers are normal and there is no melanocytic hyperplasia benign melanosis has a protective effect against neoplasia it appears during first few years of life and becomes static by early adulthood both eyes are affected and it can be asymmetrical this picture shows benign melanosis it presents as areas of flat patchy brownish pigmentation throughout conjunctiva they are usually concentrated at the limbus as you can see in this picture 
they can also be concentrated around perforating branches of vessels or nerves as they enter the sclera. The pigmented epithelium moves freely over globe surface. A variant of venine melanosis is seen in which small cysts are present. Thank you.